So I'm just gonna cut right to the chase here. I know most of you guys found my channel through Toho. It's a game I probably can't escape at this point and frustrates the hell out of me. Yet it's also a game I hold very close to my heart for a multitude of reasons. It's a game that has taken me through hell and back and around this time last year, I played it for the very first time, not knowing what was in store for me next. But anyway, I know you guys can read, you click on this video for a reason and that reason is because we aren't playing Toho today, no no no. Today my friends, we are playing Lenin, a game heavily inspired by Toho and a game heavily recommended by my beautiful comment section. I've been wanting to try it out for a bit but have just been putting it off, so I thought, you know what, let's just give it a shot today. I know a lot of you are probably thinking right now to yourselves, sleepless. Why don't you just play Toho, there's a game up ahead that we really want you to play. Well my answer to that dear viewer is very simple. I can't beat the fucking game! So before we get into the swing of things, I'd like to set a couple of things straight. Firstly, I'm going to be only covering one game per video. Those of you who came over from my Toho content are probably familiar with the format I've done there. You know, just covering multiple games per video. This time, I want to first go more in-depth with the games and discuss them more thoroughly, considering there are way less Lenin games than Toho, and next, just be able to get them out more frequently. Uh, hopefully every one or two weeks. Don't quote me on that, okay? Do not. Next thing I want to make clear, no, I am not going for 1cc, which also means I won't be playing extra stages. Now I know, boohoo, go laugh, but there is indeed a reason for this. It does pressure me, reading through comments, expecting 1cc or asking for extra stage. Now, this is not really because my feelings are hurt or what, it's okay. You guys can say what you want in the comments, I don't really care. But as a content creator, obviously I don't want to disappoint my audience and only provide videos that satisfy you all, so yeah. The reason why it takes so long for me to get the Toho videos out is because even though I tell myself that I don't need to 1cc, it's always at the back of my mind and I always find myself trying to do it anyway. So yeah, just wanted to switch the format a bit for the Lenin series. Uh, the Toho series will remain the same, so don't worry about that and just simply enjoy this one. Oh, and one more thing, I did add a bit of live commentary but I didn't think of doing that till late in the recording so sadly, you won't get to hear my reaction to the first three bosses. But god, I have rambled for so long now, I wouldn't be surprised if half the people clicked off the video at this point. But I'm done now, so let's begin. So upon starting the game, I was greeted by an all too familiar screen. Well, in fact, this game as a whole was all too familiar to me. Everything about land and gameplay wise is pretty much exactly the same as Toho. Everything from controls, level design, and mechanics are identical to what Toho had to offer, so there was little to no adjustment need for me to play the game. Uh, of course, it's not 100% the same and there are some minor changes in mechanics, uh, most notable thing being flash bombs. You get this meter on the bottom left of your screen that fills up over time, and when you bomb while in focus, you get a flash bomb. What this does and how it's different from a normal bomb is that the duration is lessened by quite a bit, but it doesn't get rid of the spell card bonus during bosses. That and I don't think it actually consumes a bomb, but I'm not so sure on that because I barely use them. Whenever I did, it was completely an accident anyway. If I were to say one thing about this game though, is that it definitely felt harder than Toho. Now I don't know if it's just because it's been a bit over a month since I've touched Toho or just the bullet patterns being different. Or maybe I just suck, I don't know. But goddamn, the bullets in this game are fast. They catch me off guard so much. In Toho, most of the bullets move at slower speeds and even the faster ones give you time to react. But in this game, oh my god, the projectiles just get barfed directly at your face with no warning. Another thing that messed me up in this game are the death animations. More often than not, I would die twice in a row just because the animation is so goddamn unnoticeable. It's really hard to tell when your iframes disappear after taking a hit. So a lot of the time I just sit in the middle of a wall of bullets like a dumbass thinking I'm still invincible when I'm really not. Now again, I don't know if this is just me being stupid or this happens to other people as well, but either way, this is my only big nitpick with the game. Now, the stages in this game aren't too bad. Again, there's some fast goddamn projectiles, and some of them definitely take me by surprise, but nothing really terrible. There's really no stage that gave me any problems, and I'm not even sure if I took any hits in the stage excluding mid-bosses. They definitely don't do anything on the same level as something like Mountain of Faith stage 4, for example. I really don't have a lot to say about the stages. Now again, you can pin this on me for brute force if we continue, but I did the same thing with Toho 6 to 10, and I still had a lot more to say about the stages there. I don't really want to say the stages here are lackluster, but it's more just that they don't pull anything I haven't already seen before. What did take me by surprise though are the bosses, and oh boy, let me tell you all about them. So as I said, the stages really didn't give me any issues at all, so you're probably wondering why I don't just go for 1cc at this point. Well that is because the bosses beat me in the goddamn ground for goodness sake. The bosses are hard in this game. I don't know if it's just because it's been a while since I played the shoot 'em up or because I'm just bad at these games, 
But Jesus Christ, even just a stage 2 boss was enough to vibe check me. Anyway, we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves here. I like to go through all the boss one by one, so let's start with stage 1 boss Kuro Heavy. Now, I wouldn't say that Kuro Heavy is a hard boss, not by a long shot, but are they a hard stage 1 boss? Hell yeah, they are. For stage 1 boss, their patterns are incredibly dense. I don't know if this is gonna be a recurring theme in these games or what, but their spell cards already cover most of the screen on normal. Their shots aren't that simple to dodge either, they throw a mix of aimed and random projectiles that can both come out decently quick, so you already have to be focused on the game even for stage 1. Being a stage 1 boss though, of course, they don't have too many gimmicks and complicated patterns, it all can be dodged with simple reaction. The only gimmick they really have is this shadow thingy that makes most of the screen dark, but it doesn't really change anything when you tunnel vision on your character anyway. I don't think I ever took a hit on their fight, but it definitely set the bar for boss difficulty in my eyes. Now for the stage 2 boss, oh gee, god damn I got my cheek spread for this one. Those of you who have watched my latest OVO video will already know this, but I'll repeat it for those new here. I hate curvy projectiles. And guess what this boss has? I don't know if this boss can be easily routed or something because I never bothered learning any routes, but god damn I have a lot of trouble doing some of their patterns. In fact, that goes for most bosses in this game, but I digress. Their spell cards are hard to deal with and they have a lot of different projectiles they throw at you. Again, they're very dense for a boss that comes up this early and really don't get a lot of wiggle room during them. Like their last spell especially just gives me Bianca and flashbacks, dear god. Overall, this is a pretty tough boss and they can honestly pass as a Toho stage 5 boss in my book. The next boss, Subakura, I think is very cool. Firstly, I would just like to talk about the aesthetic of the fight. I'm a huge sucker for her monochrome designs. Uh, my favorite color is black, so I'm a really big fan of the way the boss is presented. Gameplay-wise, they're not too hard. I'd honestly argue they're easier, or at least on the same footing as OG. They do have a lot of very fast spells. Uh, a lot of them shoot directly at your face, but I really only had trouble with two spells. First one being this spinny flower move they do, I understand how to do it, it's just hard and requires a lot of really tight macro dodging, it almost feels like a harder version of show spinny lasers from UFO. Uh, the other one I have trouble with is this one where they spam the screen with black bubbles. Now I don't know if this is a static pattern or what, uh, I don't know if you're supposed to safe spot it, or you just gotta pray to Jesus that you dodge these because I have no idea how you're supposed to get out of this without bombing. All of their other spells are simple enough though, most of them are just streaming spells so nothing too difficult. The stage 4 boss, Hoaka, I don't wanna say was underwhelming, but they were definitely the most forgettable in the game for me. They do have some interesting spells, don't get me wrong, like this one where they summon a wall of bullets. What the f- okay. Oh my god, how do you do that? But <laughs> the last spell was pretty fun to do as well, but other than that, if I wasn't rewatching the footage as of writing this, I would have definitely forgotten what they even threw at you. Some of the stuff they pull once again did catch me off guard, but that's just because they throw the bullets directly at her face as per usual. Oh sh <laughs> Um that's uh, that's something. But yeah, I really don't have much to say about this boss other than they were simply okay. However, the next boss, oh my god, the next boss is crazy. Oh, what the hell? It's like double dealing character all over again, oh my god. So yeah, like I said there, this boss, Koroji, is like the love child of Reisen and Seija. Instead of flipping your screen around, they flip the bullet pattern around, and it makes for some crazy spells, some of which are incredibly satisfying to dodge. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm kind of a beast for that one. The one thing though that makes this boss stand out the most for me is this absolutely insane knife spell they do. Take a look. Now I have no bombs for this last spell card. I think it's the last one at least. Oh my god, what the hell? Stop! What? What I do there? Well, Saki I never did that to me, what the hell? So yeah, this boss slaps pretty hard. What can I say? And now for the final boss, Wilhelm. They are pretty insane if I do say so myself. Oh, it's pushing me down. What? Okay. So as you can see, this boss has some sort of gravity magic or whatever, and they can absolutely mess you up with it, ripping a page out of one of my most beloved Toho bosses. Oh, she's pulling me in this time. Stealing Oku's move, I see. 
What I really like about this boss is that the gravity magic also affects the projectiles. They can kind of toss their projectiles around the screen and redirect them. Uh, it really reminds you of someone like Rachel from Blaze Blue or maybe Syndra from <coughs> League of Legends. I can say though, even if I was brute forcing my continues, their last spell was still incredibly intense for me. They place this black hole in the middle of the screen and start spinning projectiles everywhere. Uh, I think the footage speaks for itself here, so I think I'm just gonna let it play out for you guys. Okay, well, let's continue. Let's not choke. And yes, I hear you guys complaining in the comments. I am not once you seeing this right now. Unless you want this video to take another three months to come out. Oh my god, please don't. Don't be stupid, please. Hmm, yeah, that, that was cool. I like that. That was, that was an interesting game. Yeah, um, definitely gonna just before I'm gonna I'm gonna say this before you, any of you guys say this down there. Definitely gonna go back uh, maybe in my spare time, either in spare time, maybe on stream or something. Um, I haven't done any streams this year, unfortunately, even though I promise, but I will be one day seeing this most likely uh, one, 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 one of these days. Not now, though, not now, not for this video, definitely. Bad, bad, and yes, thank you. I know, I know. I need, I need to be, I need to put on my big boy pants and be there with no continues. I know. And there you all have it, the first Lennon game. The me in the footage kind of already said it, but of course, I will be going back to this in my free time to one CC and stuff like that. Uh, all the stuff I did here was purely for the video and just to experience the game for the first time. I'm super excited to check out the rest of the games, and I really hope you all stick around for those as well. I know I make a lot of comparisons to Toho, but I guess you all are already expecting that anyway. But as a game though, I would say Lennon is a pretty fun one. Without making any comparisons, I think it holds its own, and I think it is genuinely fun, and I definitely see myself playing this from time to time in the near future. The bosses have their own unique quirks and are mostly pretty memorable to me. The mechanics are simple yet solid, and there isn't really anything in the game that frustrates me a whole bunch. I think this first game is a very solid starting point and it definitely set my expectations for the rest of the series. But yeah, that's really all for today. I hope you all enjoyed. Remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, yada yada, you know the drill. Uh, anyway, till next time, thanks for watching.